Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. This is a beautiful old AVO 8, AVO meter. It's a really old analog, early multimeter. <laughs> this here is a bank of Nixie tubes that's been sent to me by Bad Dog Designs. Let's turn this AVO meter into a beautiful clock. The orange glow of Nixie tubes and Amazingly, the blue glow of LEDs behind those Nixie tubes, just special, just looks fantastic. Here it is, an AVO meter. This unit of a meter was made by AVO in London, in England. And on the back of it are some very comprehensive instructions on how to use it. It's really quite a cool old meter. It was given to me by a mate of mine at work, John. I think his dad worked for the post office. The trouble with this meter is it's completely analog. It suffers from things like parallax error. So I don't know if you can see, but in the background of the scale there, there's a little mirror. And what you've got to do with that mirror is look over the very top of that very thin needle. And when you can't see a reflection of the needle on either side, you know you're exactly on top. And that's what the mirror does. And then you read, reading off the scale. What we're going to do with this AVOmeter, there's an amazing company called Bag Dog Designs. They have sent me this. And we've got Nixie tubes in here, which give off a beautiful orange glow. Very old school, very arty indicators, if you like. We're going to go ahead and fit this modular kit inside the AVO meter and we're going to turn this AVO meter into a clock. Instead of just sitting on the shelf doing nothing forever, it's going to be used because it will draw your attention to it. We will look at it more often. It will sit there looking pretty and also functionally telling us the time. Just before we do that, let's go ahead, plug some cables in and show you that this meter actually works. So we want to measure a lithium ion battery. Lithium ion batteries had never been invented when the AVO meter was around. On this range here, we select DC. And on this range here, we select the voltage range that we want the meter to display. So I know this battery here will be in the range of two and a half volts to four and maybe five volts. So it'll cover that much range. So we're going to put it on the 10 volt range. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect up this battery. Da, da, da. And would you look at that? The meter moved. I'll show you that again. There we go. And what does the meter say? The meter says about 3.6 volts, which is pretty much exactly what you'd expect out of one of these little 18650 lithium cells. Ah, it's going to be such a shame to take this apart, knowing that it actually functions. But do I use it? The answer to the question is no. Will I use it more if it's got some beautiful Nixie tubes in it and it sits there and it tells me the time every day? Absolutely, yes, I will. Right, let's get inside it. Let's just have a look around this meter. It really is quite magnificent, the way this is all designed and built and put together. So here we have a standard sort of moving coil meter. In fact, on the back of here, and you can see it's holding my screwdriver, there's a, a magnet there. So it's a moving coil meter, and that actually is held in by two rather large screws here and here. So we should be able to pop those screws out, and with a bit of luck then we can take out that entire meter assembly. By the looks of things there's only two wires connected to the meter, as you'd expect. So we should be able to unsolder those wires, and that meter assembly will pop out no problem. And then, inside here, we have so much cool stuff. We've got a ton of wire wound, beautiful old school wire wound resistors in here. In here as well, which is really quite impressive, is a bunch of hand wound resistance wire. 
these will be used as a potential divide network for um, measuring voltages. And it could be used for measuring um, DC voltages and AC voltages. And in fact, if you look over here, this here is a transformer which will be used for high voltage and dropping the high voltage down to lower voltages for the AC side of the meter. And then the piece de resistance, this rather large coil here. So this will be a shunt resistor effectively, which will be used uh, for measuring higher currents. And those high currents will effectively, this is almost like a short, if you like, and that will just shunt quite a lot of the current through this big coil. And the small amount of current will be used to drive the moving coil meter on the front of the device. So it really is quite a cool piece of kit. First job of the day. Let's get in here and let's see if we can, whoops, there we go. That was easy. It's almost like these screws had already been undone. Oh wow, and of course they just immediately stick to the magnet of the meter. Let's see if we can pop this meter assembly out. That's looking promising. Oh yeah, come on, let's grab it by the magnet. God, I hate it when people grab me by the magnet. Come on, let's get you out of there. There we go. Oh, just a beauty. I can't be bothered to unsolder, so we'll just, just cut those connections there. I wonder what the full scale deflection is. I wonder what the uh, current full scale deflection is on this meter. Anyway, there we go. One magnificent meter assembly in all of its glory. <laughs> Next part of the mission is going to be to clean this glass. My goodness, it's disgusting in there. So the idea then is these Nixie tubes here, they will be bolted uh, to this meter assembly here and then that entire assembly will be refitted. Okay, so there's going to be no saving this meter, I'm afraid. That's a real shame. But um, again, I, I sort of feel a little bit unhappy about doing this. But at the end of the day, you know, it's not being used. And, um, and I wouldn't want to sell it. And I do want to make use of it. So fitting these Nixie tubes, to me, makes absolute sense. Windy thing. There's the little um, bias spring that uh, that that keeps that meter in place. Ah, there we go. Never mind. Well, I knew I was going to have to do this, so there we go. One meter gone. We'll leave the coil in there. No point in taking that out. Okay. Clean the desk up. So now, now we have our mounting assembly. I wonder if we have to remove this coil. We'll find out in a few seconds. Just look at that. What a really nice job Bad Dogs Designs have made of creating or recreating uh, the front plate for the meter. That's just fantastic. It looks almost spot on. Okay, yep, we're going to have to remove this coil, this little choke. Okay, captive nut removal isn't that hard. You literally just poke a suitable sized screwdriver from the other side. Watch your fingers. There we go. <laughs> gotcha. So captive nuts are now removed so we can get through both of those holes. Good. <laughs> of course, it's still got magnets on it. So everything's just sort of trying its best to connect to it. Okie dokies. Right, let's get this. Now, of course, I'm doing this all back to front and upside down so you can see what I'm up to. So let's just get this meter plate installed. One, two screws, and then let's offer up the circuit board here. And there we have it. So let's just make sure that that all lines up and that these little center neons go in the appropriate place. There we go. Careful now. There we have it. 
I mean, this is just an absolute doddle. Well done by Dog Designs. Just a, a modular fit. There we go. Let's straighten those little neons up a little bit. Look at that. Brilliant. Right, folks, I am genuinely very excited. I've managed to, oops, I've managed to fit this in place. A couple of these little connectors here were just getting in the way, so they needed bending out of the way. But that was, that was it, really. Uh, good bit of cleaning. My goodness, <laughs> it was filthy in here, absolutely filthy. So uh, the glass is now cleaned, and look at this. Just look at that. How beautiful is that? Okay, so before we get too far into this and we end up putting the back on it, let's just have a quick talk about these PCBs here that Bad Dog Designs has put together. In fact, they're beautifully made. They really are very nicely made. Um, and it's all through hole components. I'm not seeing much in the way of surface mount on here, which is nice because it means if if in the very unlikely event something was to go wrong then it would be quite simple to be to repair so we've got four nixie tubes on here and we have a couple of little neons little neon indicators one pcb will be the nixie clock drive pcb and then the other pcb here looks like it's the clock pcb and also the high voltage generator so in order to drive nixie tubes and neons you need at least 50 volts so the likelihood is is we're probably running 90 to 100 volts or something along those lines and we'll be generating that through a boost converter because this connector here has got 12 volts zero volts and then a bunch of push button options on it so in order to fit this now into the chassis we have in here a battery compartment and that battery compartment unfortunately will clash with this PCB here so we need to remove this battery compartment and then we should be able to fit that in there so simple job let's just do some screws we should be able there we go we should be able to remove that bakelite battery compartment there and that would be used to hold the batteries that would drive the active side of the electronics inside the avo multimeter such as a resistance measurement and that kind of thing look at that there we go oh you beauty <laughs> top here we've got a little cover a little protective cover for the battery uh, compartment bad dog designs have very very kindly uh, made up a control panel that's very special to me thank you very much that's very kind of you so as we go along here we literally we can just populate this control panel and we have a few cables that we need to solder up If you haven't seen a step drill before this is a step drill and as you work your way into the panel or whatever it is that you're drilling effectively you move up in size you need to be a little bit careful with this but a very very useful tool and not expensive to buy these days as well with all of those holes drilled we can go ahead and we can fit our maker's nameplate <laughs> so the next thing to do we need to fit oops, we need to fit the 12 volt you know me, I've had a bit of an idea. I wanted to make this my own. 
Um, so what I've done is I've installed two high brightness LEDs in here. <laughs> I don't have a proper heat gun. I probably should buy a heat gun at some point, but uh, I have a lighter. So um, a lighter's going to do it. There we go. Heat shrink in place. Uh, and now what we've got to do is we've got to wire wire up this connector. And there's a full wiring diagram for this. So uh, so this really isn't a hardship. Adjust is amber. So we'll just tin up the orange cable there. And we will connect that to the middle button. There it is. And there it is. Fantastic. All done. So it's time for a quick test. Then we can shrink all the heat shrink. Uh, and then we can assemble this thing and see what it looks like. I can't wait. All right, let's get the connector on the right way around. And we can see which pins are which on the connector here. And you can see here there's a 12 volt pin marked up on the silk screen on the, uh, on the uh, PCB. So... There we go. That is the connector in place. Let's uh, plug things in. Ha 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 ha. We've got lights. Happy days. Some of you may disagree with what I've done because I've taken apart a working AVOmeter and I've effectively turned it into a clock. The old AVOmeter just wasn't getting used as a meter. Too many cheap Chinese digital voltage meters out there nowadays and the AVO had basically become obsolete and sat on my shelf doing nothing. Poor sad old AVOmeter. Well now it's been given a whole new lease of life. If you've got an old AVO meter kicking around somewhere and it's not doing very much, you might want to do what I've just done. Contact Bad Dog Designs and get yourself one of these Nixie tube modules. They're absolutely fantastic. Bad Dog Designs also sell an absolute plethora of various different types of Nixie clocks. So go ahead and check out his website. I'll make sure that I pop a link in the description section down below so you can see what he's got to offer. As always, thanks ever so much for watching. Take care. Have a wonderful week and weekend. Please don't forget, give us a good old thumbs up. Make sure you subscribed if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers and beers, people. Bye for now.